Joe Rogan has taken a moderate approach to the ongoing smear campaigns and attempts to get him censored on Spotify. Over the past couple of weeks, there have been unrelenting stories from the media slamming Joe Rogan, criticizing his guests and trying to put it all on him, arguing that his show puts out dangerous misinformation. Activists for the establishment left and corporate press have demanded that Spotify take action and stop Joe Rogan. Why? Well, let's be honest. It was basically like one guest. That's right. Joe Rogan's been doing his show on Spotify for like a year and a half now. And then he had on Dr. Robert Malone. And boy, did that unleash the floodgates. Neil Young, outraged, said, you know, I I believe in free speech, but it's a private company and I don't want to be on it. So you know what? Honestly, Neil Young's right. He doesn't want his music on this platform. He can take it off. The long story short is that a bunch of leftist activists and, you know, anti-free speech types have demanded Spotify take action against Joe Rogan in some way. And Spotify, of course, can't and won't do that because of the contract they have with Joe Rogan. This has been going on for several weeks, and it's gone beyond just Dr. Robert Malone. Jordan Peterson's episode ended up getting smeared by the press. And then peripheral stories emerge where they're just basically saying Joe Rogan is awful and getting people killed. It's funny. Some people have pointed out that the false information put out by Rachel Maddow or Dr. Fauci never gets anybody killed. Or how about Dr. Fauci basically violating the rule against gain of function research? How about that getting people killed? Yeah, well, that you're not supposed to talk about. You see, the fact that Joe Rogan hosts opinions that run counter to the establishment narrative is enough to say that he's killing people. Joe Joe Rogan has responded. He's issued a soft apology. I mean, a lot of people are saying Joe Rogan's apologized. And I'm like, not really, you know, not really. He has issued an apology. That is a factual statement. But it's it, it's moderate. It's, it's metered. What uh, Joe basically said was, you know, I'm sorry for pissing you guys off. I'll try harder. I'll do my best. He apologized to Spotify for all the chaos, but he did not apologize for hosting heterodox opinions. Joe Rogan has stood up for himself and his show saying, I don't want to just host, you know, the mainstream opinion. But Joe's basically saying he is going to make sure that if he ever has on a controversial guest, he'll try and have a more establishment, you know, mainstream kind of perspective or authority figure, whatever you want to call it, following this show. I don't think it's possible. I think they'll just keep coming after Joe. In his apology video, Joe even mentioned that he never intended to get to this point. He's just some guy who likes having conversations. It is really funny that we've gotten to this point. We have this story from End Gadget. I want to give you the basic facts from the news, and then I want to tell you my opinion on this. It's not all bad. I don't want to sit here and be Debbie Downer. I actually think this story, while on the surface may look like capitulation to a certain degree, shows that freedom of speech and inquiry, it's winning. The cathedral is losing, and it often does. Over the past several decades, we have seen repeated attempts at censorship ultimately fail, and it will fail this time. And it will fail in great thanks to people like Joe Rogan, that even when Spotify makes moves and it seems like it's, you know, a net negative to shows like Joe, it actually shows we're winning. And the best they could muster up, the best the left could pull off is Neil Young and Joni Mitchell pull off the platform. Nils Lofgren. Do you know who he is? Uh, I guess he was Bruce Springsteen's guitarist. He's off the platform. Not that big of an impact for the younger generation who are probably listening to more modern music. And then Spotify says, we're going to put a a label on uh, shows talking about COVID. I do think there's something to criticize here. But all in all, if that's the best they could muster up, Joe wins. Joe wins. Free speech wins. Honest conversations win. And I think we're going to pull out of this one. I think all of this this, this negativity, this anger, the censorship, it cannot survive. Because regular people are fans of Joe's show. And Gadget reports... Joe Rogan apologizes to Spotify over backlash and promises to balance things out. Like, let's let's be honest. Joe did say, I believe he's, he said, you know, he didn't mean to piss people off or something like that, but he apologized to Spotify. Shortly after Spotify announced it would be adding a content advisory to COVID-19 podcast episodes, Rogan has issued his own response to the controversy in a video uploaded to Instagram. He apologized to Spotify for the backlash that saw Neil Young, Joni Mitchell, Mitchell and other artists. Oh, poor Nils Lofgren didn't even get a name check. He also defended his decision to book controversial guests while promising to balance things out with differing opinions. But Joe already does that. 
In his video, Joe mentioned, I had Sanjay Gupta on the show. I had Michael Osterholm on the show, establishment mainstream opinion on COVID. And Osterholm works on Biden's advisory team or whatever team he's on. But you have one person and you look at what happens. This is why it's frustrating to see any kind of capitulation. But let's be fair and let's be real. There is tact involved, strategy. And I think this is the appropriate strategy that ultimately shows Rogan's, Rogan's won. I mean, I, unless this carries on, you know, we'll see. Quote, some of my ideas are not that prepared or fleshed out because I'm literally having them in real time. But I do my best and they're just conversations. And I think that's also the appeal of the show. It's one of the things that makes it interesting. So I want to thank Spotify for being so supportive during this time. And I'm very sorry this is happening to them and they're taking so much from it. Two of his most controversial guests, Dr. Peter McCullough and Dr. Robert Malone, made multiple unproven claims related to COVID-19. Yes, and so did Rachel Maddow. In fact, Dr. Fauci makes unproven claims over and over again. In fact, many of the claims coming out from the so-called authorities are by their very nature unproven, and it's just guidance and guidelines based on what we hope to be the best. What they want is a lockstep. They want media and the government to be marching in lockstep. That ain't how it works. But when your media apparatus marches in lockstep with your government, you do not have a media apparatus. You have state propaganda. And therein lies the big problem. Joe Rogan, just a guy having conversations, is shattering the veil. And we can see it. Now imagine, imagine this. Joe Rogan can come out and say that he's just some guy having conversations and he hasn't fleshed out his ideas. Imagine if we had journalists. Imagine that. Why is it incumbent upon a comedian to be the one shattering the veil? Where are journalists who are going to sit back and say, but Dr. Fauci, in an interview, you said X, Y, and Z. When Rand Paul pointed out this document, it shows nowhere to be found. Nowhere. Well, the reality is, these people like Fauci, they won't go on these shows. I highly doubt Fauci would ever go on Joe Rogan's podcast because he would roast the man. And therein lies the problem. There's this meme. It's got a name. I forgot what it's called. But it's like any, any sufficiently unmoderated forum will inevitably, inevitably become right wing. It's not that it will become right wing. It's that the establishment calls itself the left or whatever and calls right wing people evil. And then if you are anti-establishment, you're inherently right wing. Like my favorite is Jimmy Dore. Jimmy Dore, who's like outright socialist, but calls out the establishment, talks with people like Tucker Carlson, has very clear leftist economic views, right wing. I don't know. How did that happen, Jimmy? I have no idea. Now, it's a lot harder for them to try and smear Jimmy as right wing, but they still do. They say he's, he's grifting and pretending to be on the left and say the same thing of, you know, people like me or whatever. It's like, dude, my opinions are like middle of the road. And actually, Joe Rogan even mentions on one of his episodes, like they tried calling Tim Pool alt right. Like, dude's a centrist, if anything. Yeah. All that matters is to people who are dishonest actors, people like Fauci and Maddow and Brian Stelter, the CNNs, the, the Acostas, whatever. They will not allow you, the dissenting voice, to speak on their platform. They'll just smear you as right wing. They won't appear on your shows. That's just the reality. Now, as it pertains to Joe Rogan, he is able to get more people from that other side because people want to be on a show with a massive platform. For Tim Cast IRL, it's a decently large show, I guess. I mean, I can, I can speak similarly, similarly to Joe in that never thought Tim Cast IRL would get to the point that it was at. Where we're, at, we're getting like, I think like 800,000 total views per episode. And then if you include the clips, it's like 1.2 million or like a million about uh, across the board. It's kind of crazy. Oh, actually, I guess if you include actually the podcast downloads, I was just thinking of YouTube. It's around like a million. I never, I, 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 that's crazy to me. It's absolutely insane to me. I never thought that was going to happen. And we do have some now establishment voices wanting to come on the show. But for the most part, it's still very, very difficult. I should say like establishment left. Leftists won't do it. They, they just won't do it because I don't think that their, their ideas and opinions can stand up to scrutiny. Moderates, centrists, libertarians, conservatives, they're all willing to do it. Establishment players, completely unwilling. And the reason is they need lies and manipulation to support their worldview, which is what's happening here with Joe Rogan. So they go to mention, you know, T Peter McCullough and Malone, unproven claims. For example, falsely claimed that mass formation psychosis 
is what led people to believe that vaccines are effective against COVID-19. That's not what happened. That's a lie from Endgadget. That's just literally not what uh, Dr. Malone was talking about. But hey, there you go. If anything, what Dr. Robert Malone was talking about is that people don't tolerate any dissenting opinion at all, and they're all locked in mass formation psychosis. Not that it has anything to do with vaccines preventing being effective against COVID. That's, that, that, that's a multivaried conversation. That episode in particular led a group of over 1,000 doctors, nurses, scientists, and educators. You see how they lie? You see how they lie? Okay. Yes, there were some doctors, there were some nurses, there were some scientists, educators. You mean like a podcast host? You mean like a dentist and a veterinarian? Look, I get it. There is some medical expertise for a veterinarian. But what, what does a vet have to do with what Joe Rogan's talking about? And a science podcaster who does experiments with like starting fires or something? I mean, cool stuff, to be completely honest, but that's it? Okay. You see the game they play? Doctors, nurses, and scientists. Oh, spare me your, your, your garbage. In his video, Rogan said that those guests are highly credentialed, very intelligent, very accomplished people, and they have an opinion that is different from the mainstream narrative. I wanted to hear what their opinion is. He also disputed the episode being labeled misinformation, saying that many of their opinions are shared by mainstream listeners. And not just that. You see, that's why I'm saying like a lot of people are make, you know, trying to play it out like Rogan outright was like, I'm so sorry I did this. No, he defended the episode straight up. They're still going to give some concessions, though. In it, he basically says, you know, Dr. Robert Malone holds nine patents in mRNA technology. And Dr. Peter McCullough is, is one of, is, I think he says, is the most published cardiologist. The most published. If we can't have dissenting opinions because there's a whiny, complainy establishment authority in this country, then we're all the worse off for it. So this is, this is why I get, I get you know, frustrated by the, uh, the concessions. I get it. I get it. You know, Joe goes on to say, look, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a scientist. We get it. We get it. But does Joe really need to be saying these things? I'll tell you this. Tact. I can accept tact. I can accept strategy where they have they, they do something to basically seed some areas that are of little value to them in response, diffusing a potential volatile situation that seems to be ramping up. Now, in my opinion, I fear that, you know, when it comes to PR, let, let, me, let me tell you a story. There was an incident at Vice where one of their hosts had done some horrifying thing to a woman, or he told the story where he assaulted a woman. Let's just put it that way. And the PR strategy was just like, it has nothing to do with us. It's this guy. Don't get involved. And that's what they did. And uh, ultimately, it all went away. It was, a, it, was, it was a contractor that they had, and everyone was trying to make it Vice's problem because the guy had done work with Vice. And I'm like, okay, I get it. You know, uh, my attitude was at the time, Vice should address it and be like, that's, that's not okay. And I think maybe I was wrong. You know, when I think back on it, Vice was just like, look. It's, it's one guy for one small thing that we've done. Are we supposed to be involved in this? They decided to say nothing. It worked. Say nothing. Don't fan the flames. What's happening now is that you've got a big story and now the fans are getting flamed. What might happen now is this is fuel on the fire of the left being like, this is not enough. They're now admitting it's misinformation, but they still won't do anything about it. And there is the potential. So I, I don't know. I don't know. Ultimately, I think there's a strong possibility that this could be diffusing enough because these doctors and scientists and dentists and vets and podcasters were like, there needs to be a misinformation policy because COVID doesn't, or, I'm sorry, because Spotify doesn't have a COVID disinformation policy. So now they're like, okay, we do. But here's the problem. Here's, here's what I don't like about this. They basically say, uh, let, let me read this. Quote, we are working to add a content advisory to any podcast episode that includes a discussion about COVID-19. This advisory will direct listeners to our dedicated COVID-19 hub a resource that provides easy access to data-driven facts, up-to-date information, as shared by scientists, physicians, academics, and public health authorities around the world, as well as links to trusted sources. This new effort to combat misinformation will roll out to countries around the world in the coming days. Well, I guess it's because, you know, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle released a statement Sunday morning about their concern over the misinformation on Spotify without mentioning Rogan. They have a $25 million deal. That's amazing and so dumb. Spotify paying them $25 million. Well, they paid Rogan $100 million reportedly for his show. Let me just show you the most important word. Authorities. Authorities. That's, that, that's the word I don't like. They're going to add a COVID-19 advisory to these episodes. 
Is that advisor going to uh, include people like Dr. Robert Malone? Joe, you said he was a, he's got nine patents on mRNA technology. He's very credentialed. You said Dr. Peter McCullough was the most uh, published uh, cardiologist. Are they going to be included in these advisories? They should be. Any real advisory for the average listener would include mainstream establishment science. It would have Dr. Fauci. It would have the CDC. And then it would say important balancing, you know, and, and counter opinions from experts and academics. And there are many. There's more than just these two individuals, by the way, obviously. There's some like Yale and like Oxford professor who have come out and issued uh, opinions on what's going on. What about their thoughts? If you want to do an actual advisory and say, you know, the conversation around this issue is, you know, is, is difficult and, and controversial and complicated. But take a look at these, you know, opinions and, and, and scientific data points. And then you can show Dr. Fauci saying everything he says. And I think it'd be really interesting to see that Dr. Fauci has been wrong so many times. I think it'd be interesting to see how many people have been right. As Joe Rogan points out in his video, Dr. Robert Malone and Peter McCullough had made statements in the past that you would have been banned for, but today are considered accepted. Now that's crazy. So, I mean, I, I got to say this. We are, uh, uh, it's amazing that Joe Rogan has been able to, to stand up to this. And this video we put out was like, he said he was a Neil Young fan and, and you know, told a story about working a, a security at a Neil Young concert. He said he was a Joni Mitchell fan and then accidentally cited a song that wasn't by Joni Mitchell. But you know, it was, it was, it was lighthearted. It wasn't mean, it wasn't mean spirited. And I think there was some tact involved and I can respect it. But I just say, you know, uh, well, I think this is a sign that free inquiry is winning. And, and, and there's been a lot of signs of, 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 of winning that I'm uh, excited about. I just want to point out the establishment squeals and screams and cries. But when are they going to put warning labels on Fauci, on Rachel Maddow, on, on these mainstream personalities who got so much wrong? Like, for real, when are they going to do it? They're not. Why are they only going to, you know, they're only going to put it on episodes of like the Rogan podcast. They're probably going to slap it all over my videos now because my podcasts talk about this stuff. Spotify has even removed one of my Tim Pool Daily Show episodes. So for those that aren't familiar, I do three segments on YouTube. And then I bunch them all together and upload them to iTunes and Spotify as the Tim Pool Daily Show. If you listen to the podcast, you'll probably notice like the next video is up at YouTube. I say that in, at the end of the episodes. Spotify's taking an episode down. I had no idea why. It wasn't even about anything crazy. I guess I was talked about something related to COVID and they just nuked it. Somebody complained, I guess. Does that happen to CNN when they get things wrong? When, you know, CNN hosts Reza Aslan who ate human brain? Granted, that was a long time ago, so it's not like it's in this modern era, but I mean, they've done their shocking and distasteful things. When is CNN going to get an episode deleted off YouTube? They won't. They're allowed to talk about whatever they want. Let me throw a shout out to NewsGuard. A shout out to NewsGuard, right? NewsGuard, hey, look at that. Deadline gets a 100 out of 100. I love this. How? Deadline's published false information about me in the past, and the thing about NewsGuard, and the reason I bring this up, is it's another example of the advisory and the warning labels and what they really mean. Now, I like to use NewsGuard because they do some groundwork that I value in checking to make sure certain news organizations are showing who their content creators are. But uh, here's something funny. We had Darren Beatty on Timcast IRL, and I mentioned this. I was like, you know, you run Revolver News. Why don't you just show guidelines and, and flag your ads and then just get some get some score from NewsGuard so you can say that you're you're as credit you're certified by the same agency as the New York Times or whatever. And he was like, the economist doesn't have bylines. And I was like, that's an interesting point. I checked. They say right here, one of the criteria for getting certified by NewsGuard is that the site provides names of content creators along with their contact or biographical information. The economist does not do that. Yet they get a 100 out of a 100. 100. Because the reality is the certification process for NewsGuard is really just, are you an establishment mainstream corporate press? You by default will get a perfect score. How do we know the New York Times is telling the truth? Yeah, just assumed they are. How do we know whether or not, say, TimCast.com is telling the truth? Well, we'll check their article based against the New York Times or CNN. And if it falls in line with what they've reported, it must be true. But what if I report something that runs counter? Let's say Tim, TimCast.com reports one plus one equals two. CNN reports one plus one equals three. NewsGuard will go, it must be three because CNN's credible. And they'll give us the flag. And that's the point. 
Joe Rogan can have on a guest who may in fact be correct. Sanjay Gupta couldn't answer simple questions about why CNN had lied about the medication Joe Rogan had been taking. Yet they're the credible ones. Joe Rogan did not take horse medicine. Ivermectin, a compound, a, a chemical, is used in the creation of various medicines, including human medicine and horse medicine. They're different. They both contain ivermectin, but they're different. So I think it's entirely fair to tell everybody, do not consume horse paste. Seriously, I can't believe people would do that because it's just, it is different. You want to go to a doctor and you want to make sure they're looking at your body being like, hey, you've got this this, this health thing, right? And I'll, and, I'll, and I'll say this too, like, I talked, I talked to a doctor recently, and uh, they gave me some warnings on potential treatments and medications. They say, here's some stuff about you that we think you should consider. I said, oh, how about that? I don't want to get too personal because none of anyone's business. It's, not, it's no one's business but my own. But that has an impact for me and has impact for you know, other people. I'm not going to be getting my, my recommendations from Sanjay Gupta. He's not my doctor. He doesn't know my medical history. But of course, it is as it's always been in this modern era. Sanjay Gupta, Rachel Maddow, Dr. Fauci, etc. They can give medical advice all day and night. Bill Gates can give medical advice all day and night. Celebrities can tell you to drive into a parking lot, wait in your car, stick your arm out and get injected. And when I say something as simple as maybe you should talk to your doctor first, they tell me why. And they're allowed to do it. YouTube will not ban them. Facebook will not censor them. How psychotic. Shout out to uh, our good friend, Casey Neistat, one of the one of the, he's the legendary vlogger, one of the most famous YouTubers of all time. And all in all, a pretty good dude. Um, I, I've, I've, uh, I would say I've made his acquaintance and we've done some we, we've we've tra we traveled to Ferguson together and we, I, we've had some meetings where we discussed, uh, you know, media and stuff. And, uh, you know, he was trying to, uh, you know, back when he was trying to do Beam, the new stuff. You may have heard me tell the story, but it's important, to, important context here. Casey Neistat tweeted, go get vaccinated or something to that effect. I responded with, no, go talk to your doctor about what's right for you. And he responded, strange. I didn't talk to a doctor. I just pulled into a parking lot, waited 45 minutes, stuck my arm out the window and got vaccinated. And I was just shocked by that. I was like, that's insane. You pulled into a parking lot and just trusted a random stranger to stick you in the arm with some fluid to inject into your body, and you didn't talk to a doctor first? The response from the left was hilarious. They said, they told me, no. They said I was trying to discourage people from getting vaccinated. I was like, what? By telling them to go to a doctor? Isn't that strange that the establishment narrative would tell people not to go to a doctor? Why? Because there's a very small percentage chance, in my opinion, that you might go to a doctor and he might say, whoa, you have Guillain-Barre syndrome. You, it's clear here from your medical history. I don't think you should be getting this. It's extremely rare. Most people, probably 99%, the doctor would be like, no, you're fine. You can get this. Don't worry about it. Some people responded to me saying, the doctor is just going to tell you to get the vaccine, so that's pointless. And I was like, you go to a doctor for medical advice and because he would tell you to get vaccinated, it's pointless to go to your doctor. That's nuts. That's crazy. They're like, why, why even bother? And I'm like, if somebody is skeptical, if somebody is an anti-vaxxer, they're not going to trust you because you told them to just go into a parking lot. That's insane. But if I say to somebody, why don't you go talk to a doctor? And they are a skeptic and they go and talk to a doctor and they say, oh, yeah, doc, I heard you can't answer this question. And the doctor goes, actually, I can. The answer to that question is X, Y, and Z, A, B, C, 1, 2, 3, 4. And they go, oh, Google it right now, and you'll see that I'm right. And they do, oh, wow, doc, you're right. Look, the issue is that some people don't trust their doctors. The issue is that some people have bad doctors. Joe Rogan clearly has a good doctor, right? You like Joe Rogan? You think his doctor treated him well? That's exactly why I say you need to go and talk to your doctor. Because the last thing we need are for people to get sick and be like, I ain't going to talk to those doctors, and then they die. Or people to, to not, you know, to, to, to be at high risk. Someone who's got maybe like diabetes or someone who's, uh, that, that may be an underlying condition, I don't know. Some people who might be morbidly obese or, uh, or old, and a doctor is going to be like, look at the risk assessment. This is something you should do, regardless of what you may, you like, you can ask all the questions in the world. The point is, if Joe Rogan can find a good doctor, if I can find a good doctor, good doctors exist. And I just, my main point here is, 
when the establishment and the celebrities espouse the establishment narrative, which is big pharma good, they're totally fine. No censorship, no flagging, no content warnings. But if I simply say, go and talk to a doctor about what's right for you, they come after me on Twitter and call me an anti-vaxxer, which is the most insane thing ever. Even when they acknowledge doctors will tell you to get vaccinated. Joe Rogan has on Sanjay Gupta, Michael Osterholm. No one cares. He has on two other doctors, and it's the apocalypse. And Spotify is now bending the knee. All in all, I think it shows that, you know, this is a metered response. They're not doing much, if anything. And in the end, I do think it's a soft win. So it is what it is, man. I'll just say this. Whatever keeps Joe Rogan on the air is good for us, because I got to say, it's very scary. If this is one of the last lines of defense or the strongest lines of defense, we need Joe to host as many individuals as possible to make sure the word gets out. But I will say it's also true. If they ever were to successfully take down Joe's show, he could move it anywhere. He's not going away until he's too old or decides to quit. And then once that happens, people will just look for something new because these ideas don't go away with censorship. Doesn't work. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 1 p.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you all then.